Hey there, Mike here with Cine Samples. We're excited to show you our new orchestral sketch tool, Cine Symphony Lite. Cine Symphony Lite was designed with two basic functions in mind. One, we wanted to provide a solid orchestra library for up and coming composers and students. And two, we also wanted to create a library uh, that's a complete orchestral sketch tool for the professional composer working on a remote rig or laptop. This library is lightweight in size, measuring it at two gigabytes in total. It actually contains everything a composer needs to create high quality sketches of their music right out of the box and with no sampler software required. It's very light on resources and RAM. So let's get right to the patches. Cine Symphony Lite is comprised of six ensemble patches with the ability to isolate and alter the ranges of the individual sections that make up each ensemble patch. We have a strings ensembles, arco, strings ensembles, pizzicato, brass ensemble, woodwind ensemble, a timpani patch, and a percussion ensemble patch. Let's start with the strings ensemble, arco. So I'm going to quickly go through all the patches just to kind of give you an idea of how things sound and how things are programmed. And then I'm going to go into more detail uh, discussing some of the more advanced functions. So here is the uh, strings ensemble arco. So those are the shorts and all the patches have uh, shorts and longs. In the case of strings, we have spiccatos and sustains. The way it's mapped by default, if you play uh, play hard, you know you get the sustains. Play short, you get the or play lightly, uh, you get the shorts. And there's different ways you can map it. Of course, we have the, the velocity map, which is the default, and then the key switch map, which if you play harder, you get the more. Right, and that's just the shorts. And then if I press the low A, the low A here, uh, we're in uh, we're in sustain mode, right? So, so let's just move right on. That's strings ensemble arco. Strings ensemble pizzicato. This is a very important patch to have. Now we have brass ensemble. Right, so. trumpets and the horns are in the middle and I love this patch Woodwind ensembles. Again, we have the shorts and the longs. Right. So here's uh, the quieter dynamics, you know. Here's the key switch map. So we're just in sustain mode now. Okay, then we have a timpani patch. And uh, 
you definitely need a timpani patch in an orchestral library. And this is... Um, the way it's mapped, you've got the, the, the range of the timpani here, but then we've also duplicated it up here so it allows you to do some, you know, rolls. A little easier to play it that way than, than sort of playing it on one key, right? And then finally, we have a, a percussion ensemble light patch, okay? And this is kind of like, I don't know if you remember back in general MIDI days, uh, if you set your, your sequencer or whatever to channel 10, it would be sort of this general MIDI mapping of, of a full percussion uh, section. Uh, this doesn't, it's not exactly like the same mapping, but it's a similar concept. So down here we have the, uh, the bass drums, Then we have snares here. We have four toms, right? And then there's a djembe here. A bongo. And then we have <clears throat> shaker. I mean, you could. It's kind of a longer shaker. And then we have. Uh, this is a pulley sticks. So. So. <laughs> kind of really. Here's your percussion section. You're done, right? And that's a shorter, uh, okay. And then we have uh, wood blocks, castanets. That's a suspended cymbal hit with a uh, mallet. Suspended cymbal roll, which Jerry Goldsmith hated. <laughs> and then there's the uh, crash cymbal. It's a tam tam hit, a tam tam crescendo. Triangle and a uh, a tambourine. Now, on the far edges of the mapping, we have some. Uh, down here, we have tubular bells. Okay, and then up here we have Glockenspiel. All right, so that's a basic run through of the patches. Now let's go back to the first one and talk about the strings ensemble uh, Arco uh, advanced controls. So, you know, traditionally um, there's, a, there's other developers out there. There's some really great ensemble patches that you can get. But the downside to some of them is you don't have control or flexibility over the way that it's mapped out. So for example, let's take a look at uh, the way it's mapped currently. Let's, let's go back to uh, our... Right, so the way it's mapped, you got the bases starting their low C, right? As we go up and we get to C1, that's where the cellos start. And cellos continue through to where the violas start, which is on F2. That's this note right here. And go up, and the violins start around G3. And you hear there's a little bit of a uh, kind of a crossfade as you move up to so keep it kind of smooth. And then it's uh, violins all the way to the top. Now, let's, uh, let's mess around with uh, sort of the ranges a little bit. Let's say you're working on uh, something here. You're going, um, I don't know. Something like that. So right now we have, you know, 
violas and violins on the top and the cellos are kind of in the middle here and then the low celli and double basses are down here. But if you wanted, you can increase or raise the, the, where the cellos and the violas uh, start. Let's go up a little bit. So this is, obviously it's the bottom range of the viola, but it's also, this is the top range of the cello. So let's raise it up to like, a, you know, a D and play the same thing. All right, so you get that nice strident uh, cello sound, right? If you, if, and it's kind of like they're playing in fourth position up on their A string. Um, and you don't really have much violas in there at all. So going back to, to how it was. So it's just a different sound. And what you can do is you can save different patches for different types of ensembles that you might want to have. Um, and the other cool trick you can do, and, and I'll move on to some of the other uh, instruments here, is if you wanted, you can actually if isolate just the violas and have a patch that's just violas and isolate just the cellos and have a patch that's just the cellos. Uh, so it gives you that, that added flexibility. Now, let's talk about this chord arranger. This is cool. Uh, what this does, this is basically, it's a virtual orchestrator, if you will. Uh, so say you're playing a chord. Let's just, uh, here's a, just a C major chord, right? Now, say you gave this ensemble patch to an orchestrator, and he's like, okay, I got to orchestrate this for a group. He's going he's gonna to assign these notes to the different sections of, of the orchestra, right? He's going to have violins, maybe, uh, you know, violas, ba cellos, and basses like, down here. So when it's set to light mode, you have one section per note. So here we have, it's going to be violins, viola, ch and cellos. Violin, violin, viola, viola, cello, double bass. So it will um, orchestrate it for you, basically. One section per note. Now, if you set it to medium, it's going to give you a much more fuller type of an orchestration where you have two sections doubling a note. You know, sometimes you'll want to have the violins and violas on the same note or, you know, the violins or the violas and the cellos together on the same note. So here's the same chord. So we got violin and viola, violin and viola, violin, viola, violin, viola, cello and viola, cello and double bass. It's a much fuller sound. Two sections per note. All right. And then on heavy... This is just every possible section that can play that note that's within the range of that note will play. So this is the thickest. That's the that's the fullest sound, right? And then uh, by default, it's it's just sort of like your your standard um, MIDI mapping. Let me show you how that sounds with the brass. So this is the brass ensemble. And um, so let's mess around with the ranges. So we have tuba, trombones, and then horns come in, and then the trumpets come in, right? But let's just extend, let's go crazy here, and let's, uh, let's just like not have the trumpets in there at all. <laughs> and uh, you know, the tuba can be way down, you know, start on this lowest note. And then let's get, let's have trombone, um, the top, Let's have the top note of the trombone, which is this one. Go all the way there, and let's actually nix. Well, the top note of the trombone can, can be, let's say, C sharp one. So basically, you have, in this case, the, just the horns. can increase the the trombone uh you know just mess around with right or let's have the trumpets we need the trumpets let's do like this you know. so. there are all these different kind of tonal sounds you can get and and 
it could be fun to experiment with, experiment with different uh, different mappings and create your own patches for a variety of scenarios. Okay. And then uh, we have the Woodwinds Ensemble. I'll go through how that sounds with the, uh, you know. So let's have, I don't know, let's ditch the flute. So by ditch, ditching the flute, the lowest note, you just have the lowest note be way up there, you know, and... Uh, So you can have, you know, maybe a clarinet dominated uh, ensemble patch. Right. Or you can have a uh, an oboe dominated uh, ensemble patch. See, so you can have a lot of fun with this and finding the exact color you're looking for. Cine Symphony Light also comes with a variety of multis. We have five multis, and I'm going to walk through them now. Here's the first one. It's called Cine Symphony Light Auto Arranger On. Now, this multi is it's just all of the instruments loaded with the Auto Arranger tool automatically turned on. Just a quick way of loading up the whole library. Now, let's look at uh, this one's called Light Cartoon. So it's basically pizzicato and woodwinds. Next one's called Wind Symphony. So this one is mostly brass uh, and woodwinds. And then the last two are just quick ways to load up the rest of the library. This is uh, for the velocity mapping, and uh, this one is for the key switch mapping. So those are the multis. Well, that's it for the walkthrough. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, in the next video, I'm actually going to do a, a, another live composition screencast. So uh, click below. I think I'm going to put it there. <laughs> uh, and you can watch that. Uh, and if you want to find out more information about the library, click up there. and. Uh, and they'll take you to uh, to our website. So thanks for watching. Uh, have a good day. Bye.